Okay, for an example, for rigid conduit, we're gonna start with a box. This is an FSD box with a three quarter inch inset. We're gonna come down this post. We're gonna run across this example of a strut rack. And we're gonna end up coming up this post and setting another box. So basically from box to box and a conduit between them. But with rigid conduit, it's a lot more involved. If we run an EMT, we just bend the pipe, put it in connectors and regular boxes and not a problem. But rigid conduit, we gotta thread this stuff together. The bending process is still the same as if it was EMT, but because it's rigid and because it gets threaded together, it is a little bit more involved. So first thing we need to do is come up with a measurement from our box to the top of this strut right here. So a little bit of math's involved, a little bit of subtracting, and a little bit of addition. To the floor, I'm looking at where the boss would be. I got 45 and 3 eighths of an inch. The strut rack happens to be three and basically a half inches tall. Another thought is we actually have to have five threads engaged into this boss. So three and a half inches here, 45 and a half inches there. So we got 42 inches if we take the three and a half inches from the 45 and a half. So 42 inch 90 plus the threads. Now threads on conduit, we need five full threads. So we actually need to figure out what those five full threads equal. I'm gonna go over here and get a piece of conduit that actually has factory threads on it. Now looking at our factory threads and using our tape measure, I'm gonna count five full threads. One, two, three, four, five. Looks to be about uh, a little bit less than a half of an inch. And I'm gonna say that five threads is what we need to fully engage we're going to give it at least a half inch more to make sure we got some meat in there. So we had 45 and a half to the floor, three and a half to the top of the strut, 42 overall. We're going to add a half inch for five threads. So now at 42 and a half inch for a 90. Same principles for this, measuring out and putting marks on the conduit. This is, however, three quarter inch rigid. We're gonna use a one inch EMT slash three quarter inch rigid bender. This bender right here is actually dual purpose. It is rated, says right on it, one inch EMT and three quarter rigid. Says that right here, three quarter inch rigid. Now the deduction for a 90 on this is listed right on this. So our deduction is deduct eight inches. We came up with 42 and a half for our overall measurement, including the threads. So 42 and a half would measure from the end of the pipe. Now this one already has threads on it because it's factory in, but we'd do the same thing and then thread the pipe later. 42 and a half subtract eight. The 42 and a half subtract eight. So we're going to back up one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it comes up to 34 and a half. Or we can overhang, as some people do, eight inches overhang on the end of the pipe, and we come up 42 and a half inches. Same deal, same mark. We'll put this mark all the way around the pipe using our pencil, not, not, not a marker, not any type of ink, a pencil. I'm going to put that mark on the arrow. I'm going to place this on the floor. And it's going to take a lot of effort for this rigid conduit because this does not bend easy. It is thick wall conduit. We're going to bounce on this thing. Try to keep all the foot pressure you can on it. As we get close, we'll put a level on it to make sure once we get to the level spot we want, Keep the bubble in the in between the lines. 
and right there we are. Now that's a 42 and a half inch 90, should be. We'll double check. And we got 42 and a half inches. That's right where we're supposed to be. Well, now we've got this bent, we're going to actually mount to this box. And we're going to come up with a normal issue that we always have with rigid conduit. We're going to be on this strut rack. We'll be lined up with this box. The problem we're going to have is how we're we going to screw that on there. We're actually going to have to take the box off of this mounting that we've got it mounted. We've got to take it off. We're going to screw the box onto the pipe and then remount the box. So we'll get this started on this thread. We want five good threads. And there's five. And we get a little bit more. Five's all we need. But I'll see how many more we can get. Maybe one more. That's about it. We got six threads from the factory threading. We're going to put this in place. And it should mount to exactly the same holes that we took it loose from. We'll put four screws in this because we've got four places to put screws. Two is required by code, but I prefer if there's a hole, let's put a screw in it. Notice that we've got a mini mounted here within three foot of the box because we have structure and that's required by code. We're leaving this and going to our strut. On our strut, we're going to put strut straps to mount it to the strut. This goes in. Side piece, side piece, bolt, nut. I'm going to leave that loose and you'll see why in a little bit. We're going to continue this run on across the strut rack. How are we going to do that? Another piece of pipe. And we're going to thread it together. We got to thread it in. We got a factory coupling right there. We're going to get it started by hand. Once we get it hand tight, we'll take our pliers and tighten it up. That's wrench tight. Now we're going to continue on and figure out what we need to get over here and turn it up to our box that we'll eventually mount at 48 inches of center here, over here. We're going to need to get another 90 made, but we need to know what that 90 is going to equal. And here's the, the difference. We've got on this end, we got a coupling. As we mentioned before, we got to compensate for the threads that's going to go inside that threaded piece. In this case, from our column here, the end of our coupling, I'm seeing 31 and a half inches. We're going to give it another half inches to get the threads inside there. So 31 and a half plus another half. Get those five threads in there. It's going to be 32. So we need a 32 inch 90 to get from here to here. Then we've got to measure up and cut that off as a secondary piece. So the first part here is 32 inch 90. We're going to deduct the eight as we did before. We said 32 inches compensating for our five threads. 32 inches minus eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 24 inches is what I come up with. Or overhanging eight inches. It's still coming up with 32 inches. We'll mark that all the way around the pipe. And we're gonna bend it. Okay, we got the uh, arrow lined up with our mark. The mark's at 24 inches. Again, that's 32 inches subtracting eight. And we're going to bend this. Again, it takes a lot of effort. This is three quarter inch rigid. It's one inch EMT slash three quarter inch bender. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of weight. Some people have problems with this because they're not heavy enough. And that's where a, an assisted bender comes into play, such as a Chicago bender or power assisted bender. Once we get close, put the level on there, check our level bubble. We're not there yet. Just a little bit more. 
And we're in the bubble. That should be a 32 inch 90. We'll check it. And right there is 32 inches. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and mock up our other box. Figure out our cut point where this is going to be and go ahead and thread this. So we know that our uh, strut is three and a half inches. And now we're going to see what our floor is to our location of our boss, our threaded boss here. 41 and a half. 41 and a half, subtract three and a half, so 38 plus another half inch for our thread. So this piece of pipe on the long end, we're going to make a mark at 38 and a half inches. To make this more manageable, to try to spin this on, 38 and a half inches. Okay, we got it staged on our tripod vise. We got it uh, chained, locked in. We got our marker over top of our bucket to catch our debris that's gonna create when we cut. We do wanna ream it. So those reaming tools I was talking about earlier, we're gonna go in, use a half round file, go all the way around, take any burr off. It is a little bit bigger than I want. So we'll take this piece of quarter inch all thread and just double check all the way around. Make sure there's no inside burrs. Now we're gonna thread this pipe. This is a two person job. Always wanna have some rags and we're gonna set this power pony, which is already set up with a three quarter inch die on the end of that pipe. Gonna sense it up. I'm going to use the rag, kind of put a little pressure against it as it spins. And as we start a bite, then Willie's going to start thread, uh, putting some thread oil on it. Make sure we're over the bucket. Give some lube. Notice that the lube's going in the bucket, not on the floor. Important that. Now as we're going, Willie's keeping this thing good and lubricated. And we're going to run this until the end of that pipe gets flush with the end of this die. The tighter it gets, the more it wants to pull that uh, tripod off the ground. That's the reason why two people, and the guy over here with the switch needs to be paying attention. We're going to get just a little bit more. And we're flush with the end. Now we're going to add, keep on adding some fluid as we back up because it will cut even some. And we still got some uh, filings on the inside of the, the, the cutting piece here. And it's going to fall out as we go back up. Once we get to the end, fall down, goes right in the bucket, let it drain, take our rag, wipe all this out. Now, something that some people forget to do, when we take it off this three-point tripod here, it's got oil on the inside. we we'll take it and tip it up like that. See the oil drip out of it? Don't take that across the floor and drip it all over the floor. Shouldn't have any burrs on the inside because we reamed it before. And now this piece of pipe is ready for installation. We've got our conduit now it's bent right, it's threaded on the end, it's reamed out, and the whole ideal is for us to put this into this box and thread it in that conduit. As you can see, we got physics problems about this. How are we going to do this? One, we can't thread it in the box. Two, we can't thread it in the conduit because we're we got a floor and we got this beam. So obviously, the trick for the box is to take the box off spin the box on the conduit. What about this? We've got this conduit that runs that way. There are another piece that I didn't show you. It's called an Ericsson or a three point or a three piece coupling. And there is what I call cheaters. There is threadless couplings that looks just like an EMT coupling. Most of the jobs that require rigid despise the thought of using those types of fittings. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to Manipulate. We've got this conduit that runs in a more than 10 feet that way. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to start it, kind of get it off sideways here. 
That's the reason why I left that strut strap down there loose. I'm going to spin it and pick it up, wobble it sideways, and get a full revolution on it. We know we have to have at least five. We're looking good. And it looks like six is easy. I'm going to try for seven. And seven looks good, and seven is tight. So what I've done, I've put everything out of alignment. I've kind of pulled it up, and I've got this conduit threaded on there. It's got to fit in this box and also a strap. You see we got problems there, right? So what we got to do is we got to pull this box off. Now we're going to get this box threaded on the conduit. Again, once it gets started, we want at least five threads engaged. So that started about right there. We'll say that's one, two, three, four. Getting tight. This is one we threaded. And that's five, and that looks to be close to the flange. Now we're going to pick it up. Get it into our mini, sitting on our strut, sitting in our mini, and should be lined up with our holes that we had before. Got the two screws and the two flanges. We got the conduit running all the way across. We got strut sitting here. We're gonna put strap, strut straps on that strut. We've got minis within three foot of the box. The box is sitting here at the right height. Now, the thing that we're missing Right here, we run those threads to the end of our power pony head. I've got exposed threads that are not fully cut, but exposed threads about three-eighths of an inch below that box. We're required to install uh, galvanized coating on top of that. It comes in a spray can, it's easy to spray it on there. Uh, if you're going to spray that, you can get some backing, get some paper, maybe some tape and tape up the area and just spray it. There is some that you just uh, use a brush and brush on. We have to galvanize those exposed threads. Okay, we've got some code galvanized. These exposed threads that we made, I'm gonna take a piece of paper. We don't wanna spray other than the threads. This code galvanized, simple spray. It goes on pretty easy. It's like spray paint, but it's galvanized. A little bit here, a little bit there, get it behind there. It's okay if it runs a little bit, it will dry to a powdery form. But we gotta protect those threads. This should be a complete setup all the way across, threaded conduit, strut rack, and right there we are.